It's September 27, 2013, and I'm running a tramming test right now using the Tormach Superfly fly cutter and a sacrificial block of aluminum. And down below, I have a piece of aluminum scrap stock with a bolt tapped in it that's sitting underneath the corner of the table there. Now, I'm taking a different approach to tramming than the measurement method. I'm actually going to cut the uh, block here, take a look at the pattern, and then adjust based on the pattern that I'm seeing. Now, the uh, the way that the cut pattern is going to be affected is related to the tram, of course, but uh, traveling each direction will have an input as well. So I'm going to run some quick tests here and take a look at the pattern. Probably fairly difficult to make out the uh, tool marks on there, but primarily what you see is uh, the arcs are concave um, this direction. So there is some there is some crosshatch in this area, but as soon as the uh, as soon as the cutting tool leaves off of the right side of the part, I'm traveling left to right here. As soon as the cutting tool leaves off the right side of the part the the cross hatch here ends and then we go to a different looking cross hatch so I'm trying to get something that's even all the way across or closer to it all right I'm going to start a cut now uh, nothing has been adjusted at this point this is just strictly the initial testing <laughs> Depth of cut of 25 thousandths of an inch and a width of cut, sorry, a feed rate of um, 55 inches a minute. Alright, one of the things you'll notice when the tool is cutting is that you can see the uh, the cutter making arcs this direction the, in, the, in the material as it starts to come in and then the tool that's uh, sweeping around the backside will also make an arc as well. You see, you'll see fine uh, You'll see fine um, swarf coming off the back side of it. So you see that big chips going this way on, from the, the uh, leading cutter. And then you see small chips going this way from the trailing cutter. So what I've done at this point is I've taken the uh, bolt that's down in the bottom left corner of the mill and I've rotated it so it's extending the bolt um, in uh, 90 degrees of rotation so it should be lifting that corner of the mill a little bit. Now I don't think that's what I want. I think what I want to do is lift from this corner of the mill judging by the way the uh, pattern looks so far but I'm just doing sort of a proof of concept at this point because the uh, plate is down there. So I want to see if I notice any difference as a result of that quarter inch or quarter turn on the bolt and uh, see what happens from there. With that quarter turn on the bolt, it does appear that there are the, uh, the the trailing cutter marks are a little bit more defined. I'm going to rotate it another 90 degrees and see that that uh, goes further away from the target. So that's, that's what I'll do next. So I've rotated the bolt another 90 degrees. So that's half a revolution total. And let's run it and see what happens. turn the bolt another 180 degrees, so it's a total of one full revolution. 
Uh, the bolt is M10 by 1.5, so the corner has lifted, or the bolt has extended and compressed the stand, however you want to look at it, uh, by 1.5 millimeters. So here we go with another pass. With that, uh, probably difficult to see on the video there, but with that, the uh, all of the cross hatching in this section from here over is gone at this point. So that's definitely having an impact, uh, and it's moving away from the target. So as I anticipated, it's uh, had the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is uh, flip it over, uh, flip the tool to the other side, and work from there. All right, I have made one pass now, about uh, three quarters of a turn on the bolt on the right side of the mill, and the cross hatch marks are the same, just about all the way across. So that's pretty pleasing. I'm going to raise it up a little bit more, see if it evens out or gets worse, and then I'm going to start testing right to left to see if the right to left cut uh, pr produces a different result. All right, I've raised the bolt another quarter of a turn. Here we go. There we go. That's a pretty good angle. I don't know if it's in focus or not, but... You can have to see the cross hatch going both directions there. That looks pretty good. Alright, we're now set up for the right to left cut. And I'll go ahead and do that. I haven't changed the height at all, so the uh, bolt is still sitting at about one full revolution. <laughs> The crosshatch is pretty close to even, but not quite as even as it was. Let me take a closer look at it with the video off here. And right on the first right to left cut, where I was satisfied with the height of the uh, left to right cut, I think I said that in right order, the, uh, the, the pattern looks even initially, but if you look at it more carefully, you see it's definitely, it's definitely one-sided. So I'm going to back down the bolt on this side a little bit and see if that brings me back more in line with what I'm looking for. All right, I backed the bolt off a quarter of a turn, so I'm now about three quarters of a turn up or so. It's difficult to see from this angle, but it looks like there's almost no secondary cutting going on. Uh, back portion of it. Let's see if I can get an angle from over here. Uh, not enough contrast there. Anyway. I'm going to back it all the way down and see what I get. I didn't take it all the way down, took it down another 90 degrees, so I think I'm somewhere between 90 degrees and, 200, and 180 degrees up. Not completely certain at this point, but here we go. It's amazing how hot those chips are. You definitely feel it. Doesn't burn, but 
you know it's there. I think I'm going to take it all the way out and see what see what I see. All right, the uh, bolt right now is fully get, fully disengaged. Slide around underneath, not touching at all. I don't know if I got that on video at all. So not connected at all. Here we go. Essentially the same. Not much of a change there. Looks all right. In fact, that might be pretty reasonable. So if we go one way, we get we go one way with nothing lifted. We get a uh, pattern that's biased one direction. We go the other way, we get something that's even. So. I don't think it's a big deal at this point. I think I'm going to leave it set the way it is and not adjust tram at all. Here's an example of a part that I cut recently. And you can see that there's definitely a, uh, a bias in the cutting. Any cross hatching you see is uh, from the cross, cross hatching that you see is from the uh, overlap of the two tool paths here. Turn around the other way. There's fingerprints all over this thing, but anyway, this was uh, set of the machine in this direction, and both passes went from left to right as shown here. So it's the trailing edge of the tool again that's getting it. So I think the last thing I said was I decided I wasn't going to tram it. Well, I changed my mind. I got two pieces of 10 thousandths thick brass shim stock. Uh, they're not stacked. They're sitting side by side on either side of the bolt that holds the uh, uh, corner of the mill to the stand. Uh, what I realized was that the cut that I'm taking, primarily since the table's in the position over this way and the tool's up in this corner when it's in the home position, my primary cuts are going to be coming from over here going this direction. If I'm climb cutting or whatever, it'll be uh, uh, headed this direction if I'm doing finishing operations or whatever, which is one thing I showed on that, uh, that part that had the, uh, the arcs on it all pointed in the same direction. So that's the case for that part, and that'll be the case for a lot of parts I finish, I'm sure. So instead of messing around with it, I decided I'd uh, go for a compromise, see what I could come up with. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to run and test both directions and see how I like the uh, finish. All right, here's the right to left cut with a 10,000 shim stock underneath the right front foot. From over here, from this side at least, it looks like the cut is going both directions. It looks pretty reasonable from here as well. Looks like a good, looks like a good cross hatch pattern there. Let's see if I can get it in a light that looks reasonable. It's just difficult to see going this way. I'm not sure why. Anyway, let me do the uh, left to right cut next. All right, I'm all, all set up for the. Uh, cut with a 10,000 shim stock in the front right corner, and I'm taking a look at the finish from the right to left cut. About to do left to right, so let's take a look at that here. And here's the cut.
cut seems pretty similar going both directions. So I think I'm satisfied with that tram. I'm not going to mess with it any further. It's better than it was. So I'm happy. Before I shut it down for the evening, I figured I might as well take the piece of stock out and take a look at it. I'm going to handle the vice left handed here. Finish is obviously rough because of the uh, feed rate that I'm using, but that's a pretty even finish. Let's see if I can get somewhere that shows a little bit better. There we go. It's not any good right there. That's definitely the way to show it. All right.